we're in Church Windows payroll today, and the first thing that's the very the very top of that very first document of how to handle employee with two states is right now in this current version of payroll, meaning the payroll version right here that we're looking at, version 2022 SR2. Honestly, folks, that should be updated to SR3. That was my fault. I haven't been here in a few days, so um, I have not didn't update that. But it should be 22 SR3. This is the version of Church Windows payroll that we're currently working with. Uh, right now, this version of payroll is the top of the document says Church Windows payroll is designed to handle a single state tax. Okay, and what that means is that when we go into data setup and into a particular employee's file, we go to the state tab. Let's go to a different like employee who is paying and with withholding state tax, and go to the state tab. And we notice right here in the bot in the right hand side, it says here's our withholding state and with respective states um, filing status or status uh, statuses if if applicable okay some states may have different others may not so if say you know as uh, an employee moves then typically we would want to come in here and change this withholding state to whatever state the the new employee is now residing in okay okay at first um, so that's what it says also there is first stop taking state tax from the old state as soon as residency in the new state is established. Okay, so, but this, once they move and they're residing in a different state, but they're still working in the original state where they were, then that's where things get to be really, really tricky. Okay, and this is where right now this current version of payroll only handles one withholding state. Okay. Why I'm mentioning that is if I bring up my church windows right here at our home screen, we're going to see right here on the bottom right hand side where it says next to accounting, it says payroll coming soon. We're going to going to be merging payroll into the main home screen for church windows here. I believe the intention is still sometime here later this year to do that. Um, but this rewrite of the payroll module essentially is going to handle, I'm being instructed or told by folks here, um, that we're going to be handling this employee with when we're dealing with two states uh, uh, differently or giving our giving you better options in terms of how these sorts of things are dealt with okay um, so with that being said what are the different options that we have well first of all this is where now we're having to get into where this other document that we've attached comes into play is many uh, states will have, and, and you, if you printed the document and looked at it, you'll see that they kind of vary, um, but states that border on one another, and there are, certainly occur to be a lot of them here in the Midwest, uh, that they have reciprocal agreements with states with regards to employees with this particular type of situation. Okay, so where you've got one employee who they live in one state A, but they now work, they still continue to work in state B, is there a reciprocal agreement where <clears throat> the one state has an understanding where taxes will either be shifted or moved or they're not obligated to pay withholdings taxes? The employee is obligated to pay state income tax, say, when they file their taxes, but based on where they file, you know, that's all dealt with at the end of the year when they do their state filing. So. If you have an, so the bottom line initially about this is, is that if you've got this type of situation, which is very rare, not too terribly often, but it does happen, where you've got an employee who the church is in one state, the the employee lives in another, you've got to find out if there's a reciprocal agreement between the employer's state and the employee's residential state. Okay, and that's where that additional document about what states have reciprocal agreements becomes really, really important. Okay. And so that's why we've attached this is so you know at least, and this is always subject to change a lot, okay? So this could be updated and changed anytime by any states. And the reason why this has become a really important topic right now is that with the changes in folks' work lives due to COVID-19 is more and more folks are working from home, which then also means that the church could be in one state, the employee could be living in another working from home, and this could really impact um, state taxes for both the employee and the employer. Okay, so the the most important thing to really I think take away from all of this is that the church is really only required to comply 
with the income tax requirements in the state where the church is actually physically located. So if our church, say, is here in Ohio, those are the state taxes that we're then obligated to adhere to or comply with, okay? If, when, the, when we're dealing with an employee who lives in a different state from where they work, you have to find out, is there a reciprocal agreement between the employer state and the employee's residential state, okay? If there is a reciprocal agreement between the states, then there is no requirement to withhold state income tax where the church is located, okay? Which then raises another question entirely. But if the answer to that is no, then you'll still continue to collect the tax where the church is located. So if this say, in our case, Jimmy Hilliard now lives in, you know, Kentucky, and there is a reciprocal agreement, we could technically come in here on Jimmy's record, uncheck use tax tables, and not withhold his taxes for him, okay? Um, the, but what does that mean then? Is what, if Kentucky does have, you know, have state income tax that he's owed is how are his state taxes going to be withheld and then subsequently paid? So if there is no reciprocal agreement, then you would continue to withhold income tax for, in this case, the state of Ohio, regardless of whether, of where, where he was living at that particular point, okay? The other thing that kind of complicates this is if the employee lives in a different state and the church wants to withhold employer's residential income tax, we'll come back to that in a minute, but that's, we're now into option number two on our document where we're talking about a taxable deduction. So if we're dealing with a situation like we were talking about with Jimmy, where basically there is no reciprocal, there is a reciprocal agreement, <clears throat> but Jimmy then becomes obligated to pay his taxes, well, is that gonna be dealt with when he files his income taxes or not? So basically one of the big and bottom lines we gotta take from this is, we've gotta find out from both states what the procedure and the proper way of handling that is whether the employee then becomes obligated to paying their own taxes or whether the church is then going to become or the employer is then going to become what's called a withholding agent and you pay them on their behalf, okay? Um, again, that becomes really important because is the employee paying the taxes for their state or is the church or the employer going to be paying that, okay? It's not like you can just set this up and you can withhold certainly the state taxes for them, but that doesn't mean that you're then going to turn around and send that check into them or make that payment for them on their behalf without being what's called a withholding agent. And that's dealt with at option number three at the very bottom here. But if the employer employee wants to pay in their taxes quarterly or what have you, we could send then use option number two, which would be to go into here under data setup, <clears throat> go to deductions file, click add and set up, add a new deduction here called, you know, Kentucky or you know, somebody's employee, whatever you want to call it, um, income tax deduction. Okay, so then what that would do is it would be completely taxable. It would not show separately on the W-2. We would click OK. We would then go into their record, and we would um, we would set that up under their employee file here, add that, and then link it into a liability in accounting. And then that pay employee's name, employee would be the um, payee on that. And then once a quarter or once a month, we would write a check to them that they would then turn around and pay their taxes in on their own. Okay, they would pay them, not you as the employer. The option three is to set up the new state as a withholding agent. And that's where things get to be, the church does need to get heavily involved in that in the sense that if the employee lives in a different state and the church wants to withhold employees' residential income tax, then you need to contact the state's taxation department and get it set up as what's called a withholding agent. Then withhold the resident income tax from the employee, link it to a liability, and transfer that into accounting. So we would go into employee file, we would go back to Jimmy here, we would go to state, we would set him up here as, say, Kentucky. And again, I know that because we've got our list of reciprocal states with reciprocal agreements on them, okay? Um, so we, it's again, how would his taxes be deducted? If we were gonna withhold that, then we would need to go in and either again set up the deduction to either pay to Jimmy 
or we need to call the state of Kentucky, contact them and get set up as a, with a withholding agent where we would then submit his taxes to the state of Kentucky on his behalf. I hope that makes sense. So if I did that and we and if we do it and he wants to be paid for that, the church does not want to become a, a withholding agent for Jimmy, then we would go into accounting, set up a liability for us to then send his state taxes because the software will, will, will deduct them and withhold those taxes for him. Just we can't pay them to the state of Kentucky without being a, a, a withholding agent. So then we would go to his name and then right here under the deductions tab, I would see, oh, I didn't add it to the employee file. I so apologize. I thought I did. We go to Jimmy, go to deductions down here, choose Kentucky. I thought I added that. Did I not add that, folks? I'm so sorry. I thought I did. Boo, my fault. Kentucky. We'll just put that in there. Okay. Income tax. No, not to show separately is completely taxable. Now we've got something we can enter into the employee file. So let's find Jimmy here. Go to the deductions tab. Now we've got one here. There's Kentucky income tax. Over here, I can enter whatever the percent is. That's why deductions work really nicely for this, is this becomes a, you know, whatever the local income tax rate is, you know, whether it's, you know, 3.25 or whatever it may be, it's then going to deduct 3.25% off of his, you know, off of his gross pay automatically or taxable wages automatically, okay? But then I still have to go into account number setup after adding the account in accounting and now find Jimmy's name and link that here to the deduction for Kentucky income tax. And typically, again, it's going to be a 200 account that's going to store that money until I or the church as a, as a withholding agent pay the state of Kentucky the taxes on his behalf. Or I take and turn around and write him a check to then he can then turn around and pay that money to the state of Kentucky on his own. But the reciprocal agreements, folks, with regards to this type of situation are so vitally important. I can't stress that or we cannot stress that enough, okay, is um, is there a reciprocating agreement between your state and whatever the res residing state is for the employee? If so, that all with that impacts what's going to happen in terms of that. And don't forget, again, if there's a reciprocating agreement, you can just continue to either withhold at the rate and pay it into the state on the path, and then the states will work it out. Um, or you're not going to withhold the state taxes for the state where the employer or the church is, and then the employee becomes responsible for ensuring their taxes are getting paid. So again, it can become a very, very, very complex situation um, if we're not if we don't handle it exactly carefully. So if this type of situation occurs, we recommend that you contact or look on certainly this, you know, check and see if there's a reciprocal agreement between states. Still might be advisable to contact taxing authorities in both states to find out how the best way to, you know, handle that and, and process that. Because we definitely don't want any employees to be um, getting in any trouble with either state where they live or they work, if at all possible. Um, and again, just by way of a quick reminder that when the new payroll gets implemented or here sometime, we hope later this year, um, that we're really expecting that the new payroll is going to handle this situation much, much better. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to leave that at this topic here today. That's where we're going to leave that.